Hi, and welcome to Centerpoint Church, Kent Island Online. I'm Pastor Brian, and we're so glad that you're joining us for service today. Would you please take a few moments to join us in worship? And we're so excited to have you with us. Nothing can separate Even if I ran away Your love never fails I know I still make mistakes But you have new mercies for me every day Your love never fails You stay the same through the ages Your love never changes There may be pain in the night But joy comes in the morning And when the oceans rage I don't have to be afraid Because I know that you love me your love never fails The wind is strong and the water's deep But I'm not alone here in these open seas Cause your love never fails chasm was far too wide I never thought I'd reach the other side But your love never fails You stay the same through the ages Your love never changes there may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid. Because I know that you love me. Your love never fails. You make all things work together for my good You make all things work together for my good Every day, Lord, you make all things Work together for my good Yes you do You make all things Work together for my good You stay You stay the same through the ages Your love never changes There may be pain in the night But joy comes in the morning Oh, and when the oceans rage I don't have to be afraid Because I know that you love me Your love never fails
good morning and happy Mother's Day. Welcome to Center Point Church, Kent Island. I'm Pastor Brian here, and we're so glad that you could join us. Uh, for the next couple of weeks, we're going to deal with this idea or this sermon series entitled Incredible Moms. We thought, what better way to start off Incredible Moms with a Mother's Day message dealing with Incredible Moms? We want to look through um, scripture for the next couple of weeks and find great moms, great women that did amazing things as mothers, as leaders, um, as protectors and watchers of their houses. And so we want to share with you uh, several different characters in the Bible. Uh, today we're going to deal with the story of a lady by the name of Hannah. Um, we're going to ask that you join us as we read 1 Samuel chapter 1, uh, verses 21 through 22. The next year, Elkanah and his family went on their annual trip to offer a sacrifice to the Lord and to keep his vow. But Hannah did not go. She told her husband, wait until the boy is weaned. Then I will take him to the tabernacle and leave him there with the Lord permanently. If you're not familiar with the story of Hannah, Hannah is a wife that is married to uh, this great guy, this great husband, and she finds herself not able to be able to bear any children. And for years, she's tormented with this idea. She's tormented with the thought that she's not able to bear a child. Um, there's In that day and time, if you were a woman and you couldn't give birth, that was a very dishonorable situation. That was look, You were looked down upon. You were frowned upon. In fact, a lot of times, that was even grounds for divorce. And so this was something that was very special to her, not just physically, not just spiritually in connection with her husband, but also just for her being valued and feeling valued. Uh, she goes to a temple and she prays one day uh, extremely hard. Uh, the priest is there and he's talking to her and he says, listen, um, she says, listen, what I want is a son. I want to be able to give my husband a child. And so the priest bless her and says that, you know, that's going to happen. Uh, some time passes and she does actually conceive and she does give birth. That's where our story takes place from here. Um, she has said, though, if she's able to give birth, that she will give this child back to the Lord. And so we find ourselves with Hannah, who has now given birth, who now has this young child, Samuel, and she's getting ready to deal with the process of honoring the commitment that she's made. I want to share with you for the next couple of moments, if you're going to be an amazing mom, if you want to reinforce the idea of being an amazing mom, understanding the concept of what it takes to work, the requirement that God places on you and I to be this amazing person or for you on Mother's Day to be an amazing mom. I want to share with you this first point. The first point is this found in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 22, the call. Recognize the call. Every great mom, every incredible mom has a call from the Lord when it comes to being an amazing mom. But Hannah did not go. She told her husband, wait until the boy is weaned. Then I will take him to the tabernacle and leave him there with the Lord permanently. Hannah understands from the very beginning that she's made a promise, she's made a commitment that she's going to give this child back to the Lord. In other words, she's going to take this child and take him down to the temple and turn him over to the priest that he would serve the Lord, that he would work in this temple. Um, for uh, To be an amazing mom, to answer the call of being a mom, you have to recognize that God gives us or gives you guys these nudgings, gives you guys this pull, this desire to do great things. In fact, God gives us all this call, this nudging, this pull to do a amazing and great things. Uh, sometimes we tend to ignore it. Sometimes we tend to tune it off, but God is calling you all. It's calling us to do amazing things. When it comes to being an incredible mom, you have to understand that God is nudging you to do things that are representing God to the best level, that you're honoring God in your relationship of parenting, in your relationship of loving and caring for your child. Understand that God is calling you to be an amazing, to be an incredible, to be a dynamic and also a mom. There are going to be days when you don't feel like it. There's going to be days when you don't want to get up. There's going to be days when you don't feel like parenting. There's going to be days when you don't feel like uh, uh, correcting or encouraging. There's going to be days you just want to be alone and have a me moment. And those days are okay, but we need to have more days of parenting than days of being passive and putting stuff aside. Recognizing issue and not addressing it. Being an incredible mom means stepping up to the plate and handling the things that are in front of you. It means answering the call and laying down great Christian godly principles to your kids. It means praying with your children. It means not only praying with your children, but it means sharing scripture over your children and with your children. Not only sharing scripture over and with your children, but it means to love like God and to listen like God. What does that mean? It means to be able to pour out God's love. It means to be patient with our children sometimes when, when they're mean or rude or nasty or, or frustrating or they don't want to do their work or they don't want to help out or they don't want to do their chores. I'm still going to love you even though I have to discipline you. 
Not only am I going to love you, but there's going to be times as a mom, you're going to have to listen. Sometimes dads can be boom, 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 A, B, C. There's not a lot of grace and mercy in us. We need some moms that can be a little bit of grace and mercy. They can show a little bit more love. They can be caring. They can be sensitive. They can be just like the love of God. We need moms not just to to love like God, but we also need you to look like God. We need you to walk around and, and not just say something, but do something. Be the example that changes the lives for our young women and for our young men, for the children that God's given you. There's a call that sometimes is pulling us out of the things we don't want to do to do the things we have to do to be the representation of Christ, to be the leader in the household, to be uh, uh, the shining light that's going to guide that child, to love that child, to work with that child. There's going to be days when you don't feel like getting out of bed. There's going to be days when you've got things going on. There's going to be bills you got to pay. There's got to be things that are on your mind that you still have to say, I am going to answer the call of being an amazing mom, whether it's a thank you involved, whether there's attitude given, I'm going to be that amazing mom that answers that call. Not only do you have to be an amazing mom that answers the call, but also being amazing mom understands that you need the committed around you. Check out verse 23. Whatever you think is best, Elkanah agreed. Stay here for now, and may the Lord help you keep your promise. So she stayed home and nursed the boy until he was weaned. There's two things that happens here in this passage of scripture. Um, her husband says to her, I need, understand you need to wean this young fella. I understand you need to, to, to give him some more nurturement before you send him on his way. Here's what I want you to understand. He says to her, um, I pray or I hope that the Lord helps and keeps you with your promise. In other words, he understands that she's made a promise. It's going to be a difficult promise, a difficult commitment to give that child back to the Lord. He understands that this is part of the process of life growth. This is the process that she's going to have to go down as a mom, as a parent, a journey she's going to have to go on. He says to her, listen, I'm hoping, I'm praying, I'm with you that you're going to be able to keep that commitment. He says, I hope that the Lord is going to walk with you during this journey, strengthen you to make this plan, make this decision. You need people on your side that can help you parents. I'll say it again. You need committed people in your life that can help you parent. It can be a husband. It can be a sister, it can be a mom, it can be a stepmom, it can be a, 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 a godly character, a, a, a someone of great Christian value, but you need people in your life that can help you remain committed to the cause of sowing into the life of your child. You need people that can pray with you, that can talk with you. You need a women's group, you need a wine and women's group, you need something that you can hang out and spend some time with and learn how to grow from, uh, uh, learn how to experience, learn how to walk with, learn how to be encouraged, learn how to put your hat uh, to the side and your feet up and, and learn how to be encouraged to be committed to the process of helping your child reach these levels of godliness. This is a journey in life that we cannot do alone. You cannot parent alone. You need people that are going to help influence you, breathe life into you, encourage you to help take you to the next level of life to help take you to the next level of parenting, to help understand that, that they can walk with you down this road in these difficult highs and lows, whether they're just born or whether they're in elementary school or middle school or high school or college or they're dealing with life, that you have people that are committed to the cause of you being a successful parent, you being successful as you parent in Christ, the lives of the children that God has blessed you. You need committed people in your life that can encourage you, walk with you, share with you, uh, love on you, pray with you, pray for your situations, pray for you and your children, that you can experience life, that they could experience life. I would challenge you in your relationships with people is to begin to identify people that are committed to your child's spiritual growth, committed to you being able to sow into the life of your child. Not only are you going to be able uh, to hear God's call, not only do you need to be reminded to have people that are committed to you, but thirdly, you need to understand that there is a cost, the cost of being an incredible mom. Check out this passage of scripture in verse 23, excuse me, verse 24 and 25. When the child was weaned, Hannah took him to the tabernacle in Shiloh. They brought along a three-year-old bull for the sacrifice and a basket of flour and some wine. After sacrificing the bull, they brought the boy to Eli. There's two forms of sacrifice that takes place in this passage of scripture. 
Hannah has now be, has weaned this child off. In other words, she is she has nursed him, she has fed him, uh, she's given of herself to be an incredible mom. It's going to cost you something physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually to be an amazing mom. I'll say it again. It's going to cost you something physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually to be an amazing mom. She gave of her very self that this child could grow. To be an amazing mom, you're going to have to give so much. You're going to have to give to some people say it hurts. You're going to have to give emotionally. You're going to have to give mentally. You're going to have to give spiritually. You're going to have to give even physically. When you're tired, when you're worn out, when you You've worked when you've when you've done a long hand had a long day when you've cooked when you've done all these things and there's still more to do physically helping with projects helping with conversation talking investing in looking over loving after that child to be an incredible mom you're going to have to invest it's going to cost you something to be incredible it's going to cost you something to be amazing. It's going to cost you personally and it's going to cost you financially. I want you to see not only did she invest her time and, and her effort and her energy weaning, nurturing, taking care of, loving, protecting over this child, but it says that she took bulls to go and sacrifice. These were not some little weak sickly animals. These were their best animals. This was a gift and a sacrifice that she gave to the Lord to say, Father, we represent, we recognize who you are. We love you. We were a part of you. We represent you. Not only do we love you and that we worship you, but we're also saying we want to give you something. In order to be an amazing mom, it's going to cost you mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. It's also going to cost you financially to invest in your child's life, to invest in them through tutoring, investing in them through maybe some sports activity, investing in them to set them up to be in the best situation. Maybe we need glasses, maybe we need braces. It's gonna cost you some money to drive them from A to B. It's gonna cost you some money to invest in them that you've shown in them great character. Now I'm gonna give you a couple bucks to go to the mall, act like you got some sense. It's gonna cost you a little bit of something. You know, the problem is today's time is that we are so involved in investing in our kids financially, but not investing in them in the other four things that we talked about, nurturing them. Uh, we're so quick to give them money, give them a cash app, give them a card, and send them on their way. We want to give them money and set them up, but we don't teach them and nourish them the principles and the truth of God so that they can be outstanding men and women. It's for you as an incredible mom to invest in them financially with resources, but also to invest in them with the word of God, invest in them with character, invest in them with love to look like God, to love like God, to listen like God. It's for you to give both sides a great equal balance that they would experience the true life of God, that they would experience this growth of God, they would experience this power of God. It's going to cost you to invest mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, and it's going to cost you to invest financially. And sometimes we don't have the finances or all the resources, but we know somebody that does. We know the great God of the universe that will provide time and time and time and time again. Would you trust the Lord? Would you believe in God to take you to the next level, you and your family, to take your child to the next level? Would you invest in your child emotionally would you sit down and spend some time to color spit down sit down and spend some time to talk take a trip on down to to dairy queen or or, or baskin robbins or or chick-fil-a or, or or some kind of of moment where we can spend and be and have time together would you invest in teaching how to play spades or uno or or backgammon or chess or checkers would you invest some time in sitting down and just being a part of the process of nurturing you to be a great man a great woman invest in them in terrific ways would you invest in them that they would understand the truth of god through godly conversation godly principles godly character i know you want to watch your show but that thing is on dvr it'll come back on it'll be on hulu in another day would you spend some time investing in your kid that you would be an incredible mom by watching your child be incredible by giving and understanding the cost that it requires you Finally, I want to share with you, um, not only that there's, 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 there's call, and that not only is there call, but there's also this cost, and not only is there cost, but there's a committed group of people you need to have with you, but finally that you would understand that there needs to be the constant in the life of a child. Check out verses 27 and 28. I asked the Lord to give me this boy, and he has granted my request. Now I am giving him to the Lord, and he will belong to the Lord his whole life. 
and they worshiped the Lord there. As Hannah drops off her son Samuel, she drops him off at the temple to the priest. Um, she makes this statement. She says in verse 28, Now I am giving him to the Lord, and he will belong to the Lord with his whole life. She is saying that I am positioning him to be in a constant state of relationship with the God of the universe. I am positioning him to be in a relationship with the God of the universe and to serve the Lord. She is made up in her mind to put this constant idea to be this constant parent, to be this constant uh, indelible mark on the soul of her son, Samuel. That she is committed that I am going to be the one that pushes you and drives you and places you in position to connect and be with God. We need godly moms. We need incredible godly moms to take the posture and the position that my soul, my job, my purpose is to nurture you and push you in the ways of God, to teach you the things of God. I'm not going to beat you over the head and drag you through uh, Bible classes and make you recite all 38,000 verses of the Bible. It's not what I'm here to do. I am here to be the constant of what Christ looks like. I'm not going to be perfect but I'm gonna to strive to look like him, act like him, be like him, be the model for you to see what Christ is like. When I mess up, I'm gonna confess the mess. I'm going to be the example of great godliness. I'm gonna be the constant in our family. I'm gonna be the constant in your eyes that you can see the definition of a godly mom, the definition of a godly woman, the definition of an incredible woman, mom, parent that is sowing into the life of you, that's handling the difficulties and the challenges of life with work and finances and with jobs and, and maybe with marriage or with divorce or, or being single. I'm going to show you how to operate and deal with things. I'm going to show you how to understand that there's shortcomings, but we still press towards God's great call. I want to show you, I'm going to be the constant in your life that reminds you of who God is. I'm going to be the constant in your life I may not be perfect, but I'm going to be the constant, consistent. I am about living this life as a Christian that you may gleam, that you may get, that you may grow son or daughter to be a phenomenal man or woman of God. And in this process of you being the constant, whenever there's trouble, whenever there's drama, bringing you back to what would Jesus do? When there's hardships and when there's hurts and when there's pains, being the constant love that loves them back into position with God, that loves them into a posture of knowing and remembering that there is a greater God, a greater purpose than their hurts and their pains, being the constant in their lives that draws them back to the great God of the universe. And you being the constant, you will have them revolve around the idea of not you, but the idea of the God that you serve. And when they always know that they can come back to the constant reflection of this great God, it has to change character. It has to change personality. It has to change thought process. It has to change the individual. It has to lay down some seed that will take root in dear time. It will take root in time. Not everything happens overnight. Constant doesn't mean it didn't work for two years. I'm out. Constant means I am consistently involved in the process. When I can hold you and love you and nurture you as a child, when I have to learn to take my hands off and let you be the man or the woman that you're trying to be, but I'm going to always be the constant Christ, the constant reminder, the constant lover of your heart and your soul because it costs me and I'm invested in the growth of you, son or daughter. If you're not hearing anything I'm saying today, I want to share with you this takeaway. Being an incredible mom means being a Christ-centered constant in the life of your children. Let me say it again. Being an incredible mom means being a Christ-centered constant in the life of your children. It means that I am focused on serving the Lord, and as I am focused on serving the Lord, the reflection of Christ should come out of me. The, the essence of Christ should come out of me. Um, I am centered in him. I am focused on him. And so I want to share with you in love and with action and with, and with response. It doesn't mean I got to quote a scripture every five seconds. It means that I got to act out God's character, act out God's word, act out God's essence, act out God's truth. And in doing so, you will receive, you should receive, you should be watering down and pouring into and nurturing these great children that God has given you. And in this process, you'll see their lives be impacted. They may grab from it now, they may grab from it 10 years from now, but the one thing they can never not say 
is that you weren't the constant, that you weren't consistent in showing love, sending love, caring, and being the Christ representation. Speaking from a principle and a standing point of Christ, standing on foundation and truth and loving when they were right or wrong, that you have never not been the representation of Christ, the most living epistle that they could see, the most living scripture they could see, the most essence of Christ that they could see and touch. And in your constant, whether they're all the way over there or way over there mentally or emotionally or spiritually, your consistency, your constant character, your constant commitment, your constant committed inner circle to help uplift and upraise them and help them to be successful, your committed answering of the call, your committed cost that is costing you, giving of your time, your effort, and your energy will change and so into the lives of your children. I pray that you have an amazing Mother's Day. I want you to remember whether your kid is 3, 33, 53, it's never too late to invest in them. It's never too late to start living out these principles. It doesn't matter what the track record was. The God of the universe specializes in redeeming and restoring, or he would have never sent us Jesus in the first place. And if he's placed his son's passion and desires in us, that we are to look like him, then he has redeemed and restored whatever he so desires. Be that thing. Be that incredible mom. Start today loving and living your life in a way that is reflective of your children, that brings them back to Christ. And even in their most bitter moments, even in their most disrespectful moments, be the constant that's going to change and impact their lives. From Center Point Church, Ken Island, we hope that you have an amazing day. We hope that you start answering the call of being the most amazing, incredible mom that God has called you to be. And if you already are, that you go another level higher. We pray for you and have, hope you have a great Mother's Day. Blessings. I believe you are the way, the truth, the light. I believe you are the way, the truth, the light. I believe through every battle through every heartbreak through every circumstance I believe that you are my fortress and you are my portion oh you are my hiding place I believe that you are the way The life, I believe you are the way, the truth, Lord, the life, I believe through every blessing, through every promise, through every breath I take. I believe that you are provider, oh, and you are protector, oh, and you are the one I love. I believe that you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe that you are the way. I'm set on you And you meet me here today With mercies that are new 
All my fears and doubts, they can all come to because they can't stay long when I'm here with you. It's a new horizon, and I'm set on you. And you need me here today. The mercies that a new Lord, all my fears and doubts. They can all come to because they can't stay long when I believe you are the way, the truth, Lord, the life. I believe you are the way, the truth, Lord, the life. And I'm set on you And you meet me here today The mercies that are new, Lord All my fears and doubts They can all come to Because they can't stay long When I believe you are The way, the truth the life and I believe you are the way the truth